Ms. Lisa Erlene, Campus Bursa, Dr. Sherma Roberts, Acting Director, School for Graduate Studies and Research, Deans of the Faculties and Heads of Department, Pauline Nicholas, Campus Librarian, Coordinators, um, I'm going to name the two student representatives, but I'll, I'll give Emmanuel Alexander the um, pride of place um, because this is your event. So Emmanuel Alexander, CHAPS president, um, and Mr. Tyson Holder, Guild president. Colleagues, students in particular, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to offer warm greetings to all of you and to welcome you to what we confidently expect will be an exciting academic year 2024 to 2025. Whether you are an international, a regional, or a local student, I am delighted to welcome you into the University of the West Indies Cahill family. The Master of Ceremonies said that he didn't want to steal my thunder about where we're ranked. I wasn't going to talk about it, but since you're research students, you can look it up yourself. Um, and. Uh, the Times Higher Education uh, has ranked us in the top 100 universities in the world uh, of our age category, which is between 50 to 80 years. Yeah, you can clap for that. <laughs> this moment marks the beginning of a shared voyage in intellectual exploration and personal development, fueled by innovation and the pursuit of excellence. On behalf of the administration, faculty, and staff of the CAFL campus, I commit to offer our greatest support on this new chapter in your life, which holds the potential for you to make contributions to new knowledge and advancement in society. We live in a world that is undergoing rapid change and throwing up major global challenges, environmental and socioeconomic challenges, for example, are in search of solutions that you, who are sitting here may help to resolve through your scholarship and research. As a research focused university, part of our mandate is to be solutions orientated, whether developing renewable energy solutions, protecting our marine environment, preserving our history and culture, or creating nutritious food products to combat the scourge of diabetes and other non-communicable diseases the UE's research priorities are ambitious and relevant for society. We are driven by an innate desire to generate new knowledge and a deeper understanding of how to address the region's most pressing challenges. As you begin this exciting phase, I urge you to embrace curiosity, be open to collaboration, and uphold the highest standards of integrity in your pursuit of knowledge. It is this dedication to social justice and crime prevention that has allowed PhD student Angela Dixon, while remaining all the while employed with the Barbados Probation Service, to complete a thesis on the role of masculinities and underlying dynamics of power and violence in the perpetration of homicides in Barbados. It is this level of scientific analysis that has allowed PhD student Senator Crystal Drakes to propose a framework for a just and safe blue economy, integrating supporting factors in the areas of governance, education, local knowledge and coastal land use management to allow an ethical exploitation of our natural marine resources for the benefit of Barbados. It is a love of science education that has prompted PhD student Donna Giles to investigate how the choice to select pure science subjects in secondary schools is critically influenced by the way science is first introduced to students in primary schools in a positive exposure that ties in with future careers. It is this level of critical analysis that led PhD student Reynold Jarvis to examine leadership practices in the business community in Antigua and link these with operational performance. It is this love of intangible heritage that has prompted postgraduate student Sophia Lee to research the Barbados landship movement, most recently even exporting the exposition 
to school children in Africa. These are just a few examples of the research undertaken at Cave, Cave Hill by some of your predecessors at the postgraduate level. But the totality of our research is all encompassing. It is now your turn to add to UE's wealth of discovery by understanding and addressing the big issues of the day in your field of study, you have the potential to influence national, regional, and international policy, transform industries, and usher in reform. Never underestimate the impact of your scholarship, which your scholarship can have on the world around you in this age of information and interconnectedness. Ladies and gentlemen, you are now part of a community that thrives on collaboration, critical thinking and innovation. Embrace the tools available to you, such as artificial intelligence, to facilitate your scholarship and research. Let me say some words on AI and the UE's approach to this disruptive technology. Firstly, we embrace AI and encourage a bottom-up use of AI by our students to help solve problems, especially research problems, but do so openly acknowledging when and where you have used AI and do so with the assent of your lecturer or supervisor. Secondly, don't let AI rob you of your creativity or worse still, your Caribbean identity. AI simply feeds on whatever big data is out there on the web, which at this stage is highly skewed towards big data and the worldview contributed from the global north. So for a UUE student, the boot is in fact on the other foot. You actually have a special responsibility as UE students to infuse Caribbean thought and discovery into the realm of AI. Because if you don't provide the discoveries and ideas from the Caribbean, our literature, our culture, our sporting achievements, our ethical perspectives on climate and justice, our global contributions in economics and public health, our intangible heritage, then who will? You are postgraduate UE students. That identifies you as an intellectual voice for the Caribbean. I therefore challenge you to embrace AI and to do so to amplify the distinctive ethical and creative voice from the Caribbean so that through your own research advocacy and publications, you will help create a more balanced realm of big data on which AI will feed inclusive of the Caribbean experience. You should therefore aim to become the master of AI rather than the other way around. While the path ahead is exciting, it will not be without its challenges. Research and scholarship demand dedication, discipline and perseverance there will be moments of uncertainty and frustration. But remember that it is in those moments that true growth occurs. The lecturers, research supervisors, and staff of the School for Graduate Studies and Research will be your guides and allies in your exploration. Our UE scholars are leaders in their fields and apply their expertise through scholarship, research, and real world practice to help you do the same. In conclusion, let today be the start of a journey filled with passion, purpose, and determination. May your pursuit of knowledge be guided by a thirst for discovery and the desire to make a positive impact on the world. As you navigate the challenges and triumphs that lay ahead, know that our university stands as a firm foundation beneath your feet, supporting you every step of the way. Congratulations again, and welcome to the eminent assembly of postgraduate students at the University of the West Indies Cavill campus. Go out and make your mark. The future awaits your brilliance, and I have no doubt that you will rise to the occasion. Welcome. Thank you, Principal, for your opening and welcoming remarks. Just before I invite 
the CHAS president, Mr. Emmanuel Alexander, to come. I just want to um, say a welcome to those who may have joined just after we started. And secondly, we have an online audience as well. And I'm hoping that um, they didn't feel left out when I first welcome you who are here. Uh, we made it possible for them who couldn't be here this evening to join us online. And they're all over the world, by the way, in Kenya even. So you see what we're talking about, International University. So at this time, I want to invite our chat's president, Mr. Emmanuel Alexander, to come and give his greetings to you. Thank you again for the introduction. And firstly, I would like to say welcome to everyone, new students, whether it is your first time at the university or you're a um, returning student, I'd like you to say welcome and you've made the right decision. So my role is simply the CHAPS president. Um, I am the leader of the postgraduate students. And for some of you, you may not know what that means. And what it is simply is the school, the students, all students at the University of the West Indies, they are under a student body, which is called the Guild of Students. And on the Guild of Students, there is a representative for the postgraduate students, which looks out for you, um, caters to your welfare, advocate for your rights, whether it is you have problems in your classes or your courses, you come to me and my committee and we look out for you, as well as uh, we host uh, a lot of activities for you to come out and enhance your student life as opposed to just come to school, um, do your courses, go back. Um, at CHAPS, at Cavill, um, we want to enhance your student life as opposed to just the regular back and forth to school and home. We want to make it more than that. We want to make this place your home and we want to make your home exciting. So you've been hearing the words CHAPS go back and forth and you might not know what it is. So simply what CHAPS is, is just a cable association of postgraduate students. And at CHAPS, at Cable, we are a community, we are a family and at, sorry, and we have a lot of activities that we are planning for you guys throughout the tenure. The first one being a meet and greet where you just come, you stop by, you say hi to the committee. We have a lot of souvenirs for you guys. We have some food, some drinks, and it's just a good time just to you know, enhance your day throughout the semester, whether you're stressed, whether you're going through a lot of um, your challenges in school life. We want to make it a better place for you. And throughout the semester, again, we'd be given a lot of updates um, uh, of the events that we're having. And if you're wondering how you can be updated on these events, we have a CHAPS group chat on WhatsApp. Um, on the doors, maybe when you're leaving in your breakout session, there is a barcode that you can scan and you can join the CHAPS group chat. As well as for a lot of you, since we are master students, a lot of people you are doing research and you may need um, people to um, attempt your surveys and the CHAPS group chat is, al is always something good where you can send your surveys and just speak to your community and say, hey guys, um, I need 100 people to participate in this survey for me. And the CHAPS community, we are always ready to step up and help each other. So I would like that to continue moving forward. So when you leave, just make sure to join the CHAPS group chat and just look out for the updates throughout the semester. And I would like to see everyone at the CHAPS event. So again, I would like to thank all of you for choosing this prestigious community and this university. And I hope everyone has a successful school year. And I would like to see each and every one of you at the CHAPS event. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alexander. At this time, we will pause from us coming to speak to you. We have 
some student testimonials, students who've passed through and who want to share their experience with us. And we will have that um, video run for a few minutes. Hey, I'm Stuart. And I'm Jesse. And we are proud graduates of the University of the West Indies doing the program Masters in Tourism and Sports Management. Now, to be honest with you, when we started the program, I thought that it was going to be bombarding with tourism and sports theory. Um, but one of the things that stood out for me was how much I learned about management in general. And you know, I actually doing courses like human resource management, service quality, consultancy, all these things that stand in his stead for somebody with a master's. Um, I found that they really enhance my ability and my confidence as an as aspiring administrator. And I agree. Uh, combined with all the other things that sure, just mentioned, um, courses like tourism and destination management, sports policy, sports and event management. So you have the courses sport, sport, and then you have the tourism as well. So it brings everything together. And not only that, the management aspects of the degree really helps you out in the long way. Oh, for sure. Yeah. No the words are waste. Yeah, for sure. You gotta, you gotta give words are waste. Mm -hmm. Get a team, good team, for sure. Get your friends together. You may meet new people, people you've never seen before. People sitting next to you in this orientation right now, get their names, their numbers, build a Google Meets, build a, a WhatsApp chat. I communicate with one another. It would help, especially in those hard nights, 3 a.m. in the morning. Sure, and I know very much about that. 3 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> you have your Google Meets, it is always running. Come online, say hello, someone will respond. You work on your projects together, and all those things will help you. Yeah, and in times when things get really, really difficult, it's really good to have that team that will really keep you going and, and boost your morale up. Um, in addition to that, put aside all your undergraduate way of thinking. Now is the time to really elevate your thought process and think at a postgraduate level. Um, you know that you're going to be stating and giving facts, yes, but that's not where your marks are going to come. So at the end of the day, state you're giving facts, but yes, expand on your ideas. Make sure that everything that you're saying is grounded in theory and try to find some real world examples um, that are currently going on to support your concepts. Dr. Roberts would always say, be short on recall, be long on analysis. You know, yeah. True. Don't be afraid to think outside your box. Yeah. Challenge this thing as well. Be big, be bold, break the molds. It's very important. Yeah. And the good thing about this, two years from now, extra letters behind your name, you're going to be successful. And at the end of it all, you're going to be pro graduates of this university, from the University of the West of My class I space. Hi, my name is Natalie McGuire Batson. I'm a curator at the Barbados Museum, as well as a PhD student in the Cultural Studies program at UE Cave Hill. It was an honor to be accepted into this program and to really deep dive into Caribbean thinkers on cultural theory and cultural research methodology under the expertise of professors and lecturers such as Dr. Kamagisha, Dr. Hume, Dr. Burroughs, and Dr. Hatchity, amongst others. The transdisciplinary nature of cultural studies means that it is relevant and arguably necessary for a wide range of research inquiries in our work as Caribbean practitioners. And the knowledge sharing that occurs between lecturers and my peers in the program has enriched the approach to my area of study, which is museology, the theory of museums. I've also benefited from participating in student symposiums, and the department has provided information on access to funding and publishing opportunities, which are of great value. I've been proud to represent UWE through presentations of my research at conferences and through journal articles. With the recent establishment of the Faculty of Culture, I look forward to seeing the program grow and engage further with the meaningful research of my fellow students. My name is Ashley Levine, and I recently graduated from the University of the West Indies Cavefield campus with my master's in public health. I chose to further my studies at UB because not only was it affordable, but it also allowed me the opportunity to continue working while studying. Having done my undergrad there, I was already accustomed to the learning environment presented at UB, and I knew that it was conducive to my success. Having joined the program, 
The courses taught covered a wide range of topics, which gave me a broad knowledge base in public health, which I believe made me well-rounded in the field and prepared me for a career in public health. The lecturers were always willing to assist, always willing to help, and they went out of their way to ensure that the topics taught during the course were understood. The learning environment, the classes, the knowledge gained, and the friendships made while studying at UE made the degree fun and easy. Therefore, I can say that choosing UB was truly one of the best decisions I made for my academic future. Not only has it prepared me for a career in public health, but it has afforded me the opportunity to build lifelong friendships and broaden my knowledge skills. Okay, thank you again. Um, I'm hoping you're seeing yourself two, three, four, five years from now saying, or calling yourself doctor or something that as, as um, one person said, with letters behind your name, more letters, sorry. Okay, at this time I want to welcome to the podium our Director for Graduate Studies and Research, Dr. Sherma Roberts to deliver her welcome remarks. Good afternoon. Were you, did you feel inspired? <laughs> that seems a bit lukewarm. Did you feel inspired? Yeah. Wonderful. So did I. Thank you, Chair, Principal and Pro Vice Chancellor Professor Clive Landis, Deputy Principal Professor Winston Moore, Campus Bursa Lisa Aline, Registrars, Deans, directors, heads of units, deputy deans, program coordinators, CHAPS president, new students, ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, good evening again. It is a great pleasure for me to welcome you to the University of the West Indies KFL campus. We are always pleased when you make the KFL campus your choice for postgraduate study. In reflecting on this moment that might be filled with anxiety and excitement, I would like to remind you that you are part of a great tradition of excellence. The University of the West Indies, as you know, has produced presidents and prime ministers, professionals, policy makers, industry titans, change makers, sporting giants, distinguished and decorated scholars and ordinary men and women who have given back to their societies in invaluable ways. It has also given birth to me, having done two degrees at the University of the West Indies. I recall making a choice many years ago between teaching at the a university in the United Kingdom or returning to the Caribbean to serve. The watershed moment came when I had to publicly make a choice, and I told the committee that I've chosen to return to the Oxford of the Caribbean. Needless to say, <laughs> the room went silent. And so here I am, fulfilling all my ambitions, working and thriving among a group of colleagues that I find to be extraordinary impressive and diverse. Borrowing from the reflections of Sir Sridhar Ramphal, our fourth chancellor, every day I awake grateful for the opportunity and privilege of the divine guidance that brought me here. I see it as my vineyard that commands my devotion and loyalty, and it is the, to this vineyard that I welcome you today. We have worked really hard to bring you over 30 cutting edge and industry relevant programs that have had the input and buy-in of our local and regional partners. So this means that at the end of your programs, you would be fit for purpose. 
And when you re-engage fully in the world of work, either as entrepreneurs or as employees, you would have honed the knowledge, the skills, the critical thinking, the problem solving tools that will equip you to make a positive difference to your Caribbean region and the world. As you embark on this journey, my advice to you is to have the mindset of champions. In this mindset, anything is possible. We have examples right here in our own very Caribbean region. Persons that have challenged the status quo by saying, this space is mine and I'm coming for it. Renaissance thinkers and doers. We are actually standing on the soil that nurtured the most influential woman, woman of our time. Rihanna. At the recently concluded Olympics, the Caribbean brought home 20 combined silver and bronze medals and five gold medals, the mindset of champions. So I want to offer you five qualities that I believe are germane to the mindset of champions. One, move out of your comfort zone. Tell yourself others did it and so can I. Two, make sacrifices. Smile through the grit, chanting that nothing good comes easy. Three, maintain your focus. Stephen Covey said, begin with the end in mind. And I always like to do things that way. What is this I want to achieve? So that when the going gets tough, you know, you know, you remind yourself exactly why you're doing this. Four, and as the, 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 the clip said, mobilize the resources of your community. Ask for help, your friend, your family, your university, all of your reference groups in large part are committed to your success. Five, master your craft. Figure out very quickly how best you work and build discipline to get there. And finally, maintain your balance. Be kind to yourself and the people around you. While there is your individual responsibility, I want to acknowledge that building this mindset of champions takes a village. The offices at the KFL campus are now part of your village. The School for Graduate Studies and Research, of which I'm director, there's an open door policy. The Student Enrollment and Retention Unit, headed by Mrs. Pat Athley. The Office of Admissions, the bursary, student services, your respective faculties, your lecturers, your program coordinators, all of us are here to support your journey towards excellence. Email us politely, call us, visit us. We are your community now, your village committed to serving you. The late Rex Nettlefurda, distinguished scholar and vice chancellor commented, that the Caribbean is poised between reality and possibility. And it is our collective genius, our resilience that have allowed us to navigate the most treacherous of waters. So in the realm of possibility, I see you, all of you as champions of change, bridge builders, innovators, the next generation that will inspire hope, kindness, and excellence within and beyond this Caribbean archipelago. As I close in welcoming you to this great tradition of excellence, I want to invite you to join me in affirming who you are and who or who you will become. So please turn to the back of your program and let us affirm together the ideal UWI graduate is a critical thinker and creative, a problem solver, an effective communicator, knowledgeable and informed, competent, a leader, a team player, IT skilled and information literate, 
socially and culturally responsive, ethical, innovative and entrepreneurial, a lifelong self-motivated learner. That's you. God bless you and best wishes for success. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Roberts. I, I now feel as if I want to come back. <laughs> I've been away a long time. <laughs> but as I said, in two, some in one, two, five years, you will be carrying those additional letters behind your name. And we are looking, I am looking forward to it because as I say to my students as we go to graduation, I'm looking forward to seeing the back of you. <laughs> no, because when they're leaving, going to greet the, the chancellor, I see the back of them as they leave me. I, I look forward to that. You know, I look forward to seeing them walking away because I know they've gone and they're going out to take charge of everything um, out there. So at this time, I want to quickly take us through a few things we need to know as graduate students. And then my colleague, Mrs. Jordan, will continue. Okay, so for those of you who were not aware, because you've spent most of your life or your life on this side of campus, you now have, as a graduate student, your own home just down in Lazaretto, away from this place. It's a quiet place to go and um, to study. This building, School of Graduate Studies and Research, has 12 um, lecture rooms ranging in size from 10 persons to 40 persons. It has a lecture theater to seat 140 persons. It has a computer lab. It has a lounge where you can go chill out. You heard the chat president talk about coming and having a um, chill with them. He didn't say where, but um, you have a place at the graduate studies building where you can come and hang out as well. So it's not all about hard work. Sometimes you get to hang out. 24 seven, it's open all day long, all night long. You can come anytime once you bring your ID card because we do have a strict policy. No ID card, the security officers will tell you, go fix and come again. Yeah, ID cards are essential because you're off campus, well off this campus, you're on your own campus and you know you need to make sure and secure yourselves. So you're welcome anytime as a graduate student, this is your home. Yeah, anytime day or night you can come. If you have a class or not, you want to study, this is your place. So we've heard about the, the sections of our graduate studies. Um, admissions office takes care of all top master's students and that's uh, Mrs. Carol Jordan. The examination section is headed by Mrs. Orin Herbert. And our student enrollment, student enrollment and retention unit by our um, assistant registrar, Mrs. Adley, Pat Adley, over here on your right in yellow, the only person on your right in yellow. Can't miss her. We operate, as you've heard, 24 7, open all day long, all night long. It's just 100 meters away from the SO gas station. So if you are, like President said, you're studying all night, you can slip in and slip back out. Um, not a problem. Um, we at Graduate Studies Building, the office there, we deal with strictly research students. So where the top master's students are managed by our admissions office, the research students are managed by the office at Graduate Studies and Research. Again, you can come in anytime during the day if you have a question for us, we are not there after 4.30. Well, I shouldn't say that because my wife would ask me, what is he saying? He leaves at 4.30, but he gets home at 6. Hmm. <laughs> and she's here. <laughs> so I have to be careful what I say and how I say it. So we, the office is open until 4.30. And um, normally we don't open for students, but we do have a late evening, which we will advertise once term starts. We'll go to six on those evenings. Some regulations which you should note, um, all students must register every semester. 
and some of you have started, I've seen that, but you are to remain registered every semester until you graduate. Um, it's a simple process and Mrs. Jordan will come and give us some quick insights into how to do that. If you don't register because of, in this case, you're not kept your fees up to date, which is, which is another thing that the bursary will always remind us to do. All students must keep their fees up to date in order to be able to register. So you will be able to register to pay your fees online in person. We've got a range of, and you'll see it in a minute, a range of ways to pay your fees so that you're not locked out of e-learning. Now, those who've just finished undergrad will know that e-learning is the place you have to be for your classes. Those who have been away from UE for a little while will know, or come to know that e-learning is where you have to be and therefore you will pick up and um, catch up pretty quickly. That's where all your classes and materials are really and truly. So keep your fees up to date so you're not locked out of e-learning, so you can do your exams, so you can graduate from this place. If your grade falls below 2.0 for those top master's students, you will get a warning in the first semester. If your grade point average remains below 2.0 in the second semester, you will be required to withdraw. Now, none of us in here plan to find ourselves in that situation. None of us. So we'll make sure our GPA stays above 2.0, even 2.01 is necessary. We'll, we'll make sure and stay out so that we can graduate. And you can only graduate if you maintain your 2.0 GPA at the end of your time with us. If you find yourself slipping, this is where we have academic advisors across your faculties, whether they are your coordinators, some of them are here this evening, your supervisors for those research students, they're all there to help you as you've heard, go seek their assistants, we at Graduate Studies and in admissions also give some advice, but when it comes to academic advice, your coordinators and your supervisor are the, are the place to go, persons to see. So I've spoken about your GPA. It's to be kept above 2.0 at all times. And this is the scheme. So again, it's similar to those who've done the undergrad. It's similar to the undergrad type scheme where it's an A plus through to a C. Now, this has changed recently within the last three years. So we've now got an A plus um, range, A to A, A minus, and the range of Bs and Cs as well. But nobody, again, wants to find themselves in an F1, F2, F3, or even F E, F C. You know, we're all looking forward to being a 2.0 and above student. Right. If you find yourself at the 3.70 GPA, then and above, we will award you a distinction. You know, every year at graduation, we look forward to having those names announced with distinction, with distinction. And, you know, we all um, cheer those persons on. We also now offer a merit for those persons between 3.30 and 3.69 GPA. And of course, the last session, a GP of 2.0, 3.29, you'll get a pass. Important point to note here, when you go to register, you will see this category called GP1, and you'll see a category called, category called LO1. Blank that LO1 out of your mind, that does not concern any of you in here. That's for persons who've been with us over three years and are still working through their program. That LO1 is for the original or the former um, category of student. You are all what we call GPA students. So when you go to register, you're looking specifically for GP1, your course title, your course name, and then you will put your check next to it. So bursary. Level three of the admin building, you know, you, 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 if you've not been here before, you go out the building here, you look over to your south side and you see a building orange in color with a nice curved roof, the Hillary McDonald Beckles building. The bursary is on level three of that building and you can pay your fees, the cashier is on the ground floor. And the options to pay through KFL online, if you've been here before, you know of KFL online, you can pay by cash, we always take cash. Debit cards, yeah, 
This is not cash to society yet. Um, credit cards of all sorts, checks. You can pay through your bank, sure pay. I've paid by sure pay already. But as I said before, your fees must be paid before registration. Some of you have already seen a pre-billing going on, which you must now make up, $540, I think it is. Um, if you have other fees, university uh, fees above the 540, you can always approach the bursary for a payment plan. They will not say no, they will set it up for you. And, and, and what we found is what you need to do is keep current with that payment plan. Because again, when you get to exams and your payment plan is up to par, you will not be allowed to go to exams. So if you enter in the payment plan with the bursary, please ensure you keep your payments up to date. Um, the other thing that the bursary does is, is assist those who have scholarships and research grants. I've mentioned briefly what those are. Some of us get um, a university scholarship or other scholarships, and if there are, in some cases, um, emoluments, we call them, I go with those scholarships, you will go to the bursary and bursary will help you to draw that money down. In a lot of cases, the, bursary, the scholarships come with a prepaid tuition, so you, you just need to know that your money is paid in on your behalf and you should see a zero balance in your account. Otherwise, if you're having a bursary or, or sorry, a scholarship through us at graduate studies, let us know, let's try to help you work that through. Research grants for those who are doing the MPhils and PhDs, we do have a limited amount of money for those students who need to do research and need some help doing research. We will give you some money um, to go collect some data, to go to present at conferences. It's an application process, and as long as you settle in, you'll be guided through that application process to receive a research grant if you are at that point, because again, you must have something to present to go to conference, right? So that's not necessary for you right away, but maybe when you go into second year. Student services. Um, everything on campus is available to you as graduate students. One of the things that we try to encourage you to remember, these services are not only for undergraduate students. You pay your university fees, you can go down to student services because you need um, some counseling of some sort, whether personal, psychological, career, if you need support, if you're challenged, um, chaplaincy services, academic support clinic, it's all there for, for all of us as grad students. The, the health clinic, the shuttle service, shuttle service as well, yes, it's all for us as graduate students as well. You can go online, the website is written there to see all the services. There's a lot of online application, I call it, a lot of online, and it's open to all of us as graduate students. So don't say it's not me because I said to us earlier, we are a special group of people. We can use these services as well. Security services, our director of security is Mr. Arthur Springer, and the security office is located across the um, highway. Just as you go out the, the, the main gate, you take a right and a quick left, and you're into the CARICOM Research Park. He and his crew uh, officers are the, uh, housed there, Mr. Adams, Edwin Adams being the chief security officer, highly trained team of officers on campus. You see us wearing what's gray and blue. That's university security, but then we also have assistance from other security agencies. And you can approach them at any time for help. Um, if you need assistance in any way. As I said, the Graduate Studies building is open 24-7. You can come anytime, but bring your ID card and the security officer will let you in. No challenge at all. So those of you who have not used your KFL email as yet, you need to log in and get that sorted out. And the, the, the way it's done is your first name, dot, last name at my KFL ue.edu. Um, some of you may be saying, but I, my name is so much like John Jones, so there are many of us. When that happens, the IT campus office sorts it out for you, so you might be john.jones1, john.jones2, whatever it is, they will sort it out, but actually they've sorted it out already. So once you try to log in, they will, if you don't already have an email, they will make sure that your, your email is active and that you can receive your email and send email. Now I say that because 
we encourage each and every one of us as graduate students to use our official email for correspondence. As um, Dr. Robert says, um, kindly, was it? Um, respectfully. <laughs> no, but we encourage us to use our KFL email for official correspondence with the university. Not your Gmail, not your Hotmail, not your Yahoo, but my KFL. Probably not able to see that, but I should have mentioned all that I'm saying is in this little booklet we gave you when you got in here. So you don't have to remember because I've written it down. It's here, we've written it down, and it's all on the website as well. But we thought we'd bring it all in one place for you. Um, so you don't have to go searching the website for everything, but it's all there. These are the key officers of the School for Graduate Studies and Research. You've heard me mention Dr. Roberts, myself, Owen Ellis, Mrs. Athley over here, Mrs. Herbert, Mrs. Jordan. Kathy Long would be the admin assistant for the top master's group, and she works with Mrs. Jordan. Mrs. Holligan, who some of you, all of you met when you came in to get your little um, package. She would have been the one um, making sure you were able to sit here with us for an hour, <laughs> a little snack to keep you going. And some of the other names you see here, Suzanne and Brianna and Monica and Tanya, and Nicole, Antonio, and the list goes on. Those are the ushers you met coming in. Those are your um, clerical officers. At some point, you will interface with some of them along the way, along your journey here with us. All right, our contact information at the School for Graduate Studies and Research uh, down at Lazaretto, 417-4902 or 49010. We taught master's group, sorry, so the research students, 417-4902, that's the MPhil and PhD students. For the taught master's students, you'll speak to admissions office at 417-4119-4115. And then we also have two email addresses. The research, sorry, the taught master's students, you would have seen this one and used this before, grad studies at Cave Hill. Dot uwi dot edu and the research students at uh, grad research at cave hill dot uwi dot edu and the website is um is this website you've been using all along at cave hill dot uwi grad studies okay as we go into the next phase after we finish here and we go into our breakout sessions where you will find, get more information about your programs. You'll get advice from your coordinators. You'll get probably a class schedule and things like that. Some of you will have breakout sessions this evening and your coordinators are sitting here and waiting to join you in the rooms on the outside and some in here as well. But there's some special um, arrangements being made. For instance, the Sajikor School of Business, their taught masters um, programs, they're gonna have a session tomorrow evening at six o'clock online all right, so we have a Zoom link to share for those of you who are with the school, KV School of Business and Management and your taught master's programs. You'll get a link which you will join via Zoom tomorrow evening at six o'clock. Faculty of Humanities, only the Education and Literacy group, that's the MED in Education, Language and Literacy, sorry. Your session is on Thursday at 5 p.m. online again. That link will be shared with you. Faculty of Law, um, if there are some of you online, the Dean is here with us today, but he's gonna join you at seven o'clock tonight online. Your link has been shared for those online who are hearing me. You'll just go join the Dean and, and Deputy Dean online at seven o'clock. Sermes um, has produced a schedule for Thursday and Friday between 10 and three again there's an in, in, in person, so if any Ceremese person's here, you will go to the Ceremese office over on the south of the, of the campus, and their sessions are from 10 to 3 on Thursday and Friday. Nursing, although you might be here, again, Dr. Seeley will always have a session separate and distinct for you at nursing as well. And those of you who are having separate sessions, your links will be shared so you can join um, at the appropriate time. We have some special sessions planned tomorrow night at 6 p.m. There's a session called Surviving and Thriving in Graduate School, a discussion with grad students for grad students. And 
you are invited to go via Zoom, you go on the website, you will see this. I, we will have sent these out to you already anyway, so you, you should have been able to register. But this is where you now you get a one-on-one -on -one, um, discussion going with, with grad students, current grad students speaking to you about their experiences. So you can now um, talk to them on tomorrow night at 6 p.m. online on Zoom. We also have another one with Professor Dwayne Devonish on Thursday between six and eight for taught master's students only. And he's talking about time management for graduate students because we're gonna come into uh, and find we have some schedules which we have to figure out classes and, and, and discussion sessions and work and everything else that happens. So uh, Professor Devonish is gonna help us figure out how to manage our time as graduate students. And this is for taught master's students only on Thursday between 6 and 8 p.m. online on Zoom. You need to go and register. And then we also have for research students only on the same evening, 29th of August, that's between 6 and 8 p.m. at home at the Graduate Studies Building. All those research students um, willing to come out. Um, we are at our home at Graduate Studies between 6 and 8 on Thursday, and we're having what we're calling a mix and mingle. It's not all going to be sit and chat, but I gather there's going to be some um, lighter um, activity happening, you know, mix and mingle. So we're looking forward to seeing you all research students with us on Thursday evening at six o'clock for our mix and mingle. Um, you should respond to us. Um, you see it online, respond to us to let us know you're coming. We are planning a big um, shame dig for you. Research students only. The other things are all good as well, all right? That's just the information again. What I say we have for you is some of what you're seeing today where former students are speaking, but you can now interact with them. You couldn't do that this evening. So thank you so far, and I want to invite Mrs. Jordan Okay. This is Jordan. Oh. <laughs> Good evening. It is with great pleasure that I stand before you this evening to welcome both our returning students embarking on their master's programs and those of you joining the Kayfield campus for the first time. Your presence here marks the beginning of an exciting and transformative journey in your academic and professional lives. As you step into this new chapter, I want to emphasize the importance of dedication, hard work. The path you have chosen is one of great opportunity and potential. Yes, there will be challenges along the way, but these challenges are the very things that will shape you into the experts in your field. Your chosen area of study will not only guide you through these challenges, but will also open doors to exciting new possibilities. The knowledge and skills you gain will be transformative. You will develop critical thinking abilities that will serve you well beyond academia. You forge connections with peers and mentors that can last a lifetime. Most importantly, you'll be positioning yourself at the forefront of your field, ready to make meaningful contributions to society and potentially revolutionize your industry. We look forward to this, especially in Barbados. <laughs> Remember, the effort you put in now is 
an investment in your future. Every late night of study, each complex problem solved, each insightful discussion with your peers, and there will be many. These are all building blocks of the successful future you're creating. The resilience you develop in facing academic challenges will translate into professional tenacity. The in-depth knowledge you acquire will make you an expert in your field and the sense of accomplishment you feel upon completion. That's a reward that will fuel your confidence for years to come. Perseverance and resilience will indeed be your greatest allies in this journey. There may be moments of difficulty, times when you may feel a little bit, just a little bit overwhelmed, but I urge you to persist and also to celebrate your progress along the way. These challenges are not just obstacles, but stepping stones to your growth. There are opportunities to discover the depths of your capabilities, to innovate, and to distinguish yourself. Every challenge overcome is a testimony of your determination and a story of success to share in your future endeavors. Now, let me provide you with some crucial information um, as it relates to the start of your academic year and registration. Now for registration, you are expected to register yourselves. Registration opens on Friday, August the 30th, and we strongly encourage you to register on that day. While registration now it opens on Friday, it doesn't mean it's going to close on Friday. It's going to close then um, two weeks from then, which would be September the 20th. But we do not want you to wait until the week of September the 20th to try to register. We want you to get registered on Friday because teaching starts on Monday and we will surely be there to guide you in your registration. Now, when we say guide you in your registration, we are not speaking about what, you know, the academic advising or counseling, but rather if you're having any issues, we would be available to assist you so that you get registered on time. For the top master's students, the student affairs office is available to assist with the registration issues, whilst research specialist programs and doctoral programs will direct their queries direct to their queries or the registration issues to the graduate studies department. The Suru department will be responsible for, for providing you with um, status letters, which you must request online. They also provide you with assistance with general queries as well. You should have received correspondence detailing important procedures, including how to request the leave of absence and what to do if you encounter a registration error. Mr. Ellis mentioned your email and how you should go on um, accessing your email. The correspondence that you would have gotten from us also provides you with that information. Um, it's called a notice online credential. So it has many different things in that particular email that guides you through the whole emails, registration body. So I urge you to take a look at it, please. Now, I also encourage you to maintain open communication with your course coordinators. They're here to provide you guidance throughout your program. They're the ones who provide you the guidance that you would need. We would assist you with if you're having registration errors or if you have general queries, you would report or, or go to the Suru department or you can contact them via WhatsApp, email or telephone if, you're having, if you have any general queries. We, in, and when I say we, the admissions office dealing with top masters, we are introducing a booking system. 
that will allow you to schedule appointments with representatives in the admissions office. I know sometimes you may call, you don't get an answer. Sometimes you may send an email and you don't get an answer immediately. So we want to introduce this system, which we are hoping will be very effective, where you can either speak to us face to face online, or you can just have a telephone call with us on the, to, on the Teams, and we will be able to provide you with whatever guidance you would need Need at that particular point in time. Now, remember, you are responsible for your registration. We urge you to regularly check your records to ensure that you are correctly registered for all your courses. The courses you're registered for on CHOL are the ones you will be expected to take exams for in December. So ensure that your registration is accurate. Now, at before the end of registration, the end of registration, which is September the 20th, and you decide you don't want to, you know, for whatever reason, there you cannot come anymore. Well, in the first semester, you're not allowed leave of absence, but surely you can request a deferral. We urge you to do that within that period. That period also allows you to add and drop classes once you have consulted with your coordinator and it is okay, you can add and drop classes right up to that period. Once you do that, you are expected to write the examinations for whatever courses you have registered for. Check your registration, check CHOL. Now we also want to um, there is a feature called the plan ahead feature and for some of you who were undergraduate students now coming into the master's program, you know about the plan ahead feature. So after you meet with your coordinators this evening and into tomorrow evening, you can go ahead and use the facility of the plan ahead feature. Now, what that does is it gets you, you go in, you, 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 you choose your courses, you get to see where they fall, the days, the times, and everything, so that on Friday, when it is time for you to register, you go ahead and you click submit, you have already know what courses you have and that kind of stuff, and you can be able to do that registration as soon as registration opens. Now, that has many benefits. One, you already know what you're going to register for, you press submit, you go through, you're finished, and then let's say for what whatever reason on Friday you are having an issue. If you're allowed to register at 12 o'clock and you're having an issue, you see how you can still reach us before we close at six o'clock on Friday. You see, so we will be able to assist you. I'm not saying that Monday would not work, but remember we want to get you registered before the start of class on Monday evening and not morning. Now our office hours during the registration period have been extended to six o'clock, but we normally work until 4.30 each evening. In closing, I want to remind you that you are not alone on this journey. Your fellow students, your coordinators, your lecturers, and our administrative staff are here to support you. Do not hesitate to reach out if you need assistance or guidance. Just remember who plays what role. As you embark on your new adventure, remember that every great achievement begins with the decision to try. Your presence here this evening demonstrates your ambition and potential. Embrace the challenges. Celebrate every single victory. And most importantly, enjoy the journey of learning and growth, and growth that lies ahead. Welcome to the KFIL campus and our family of excellence. We are excited to be a part of your academic journey and we look forward to seeing you flourish in your chosen fields. Thank you and best of luck in your studies. Thank you, Mrs. Jordan. Thank you again, Mrs. Jordan, for outlining what our students have to do as far as registration is concerned. And again, we're looking forward to all of you being able to register without any 
challenges over the next few, well, from Friday and going forward, as she's explained to you. And, you know, the help is there if you need it as well. Okay, so we have allowed a minute or two for that burning question that you have, which you, you need an answer to here. Just raise your hand and we will answer quickly if it's relating to what you've heard this evening so far. Come over to the mic so we all can hear you. Part of graduate school is that you have to stand up and speak up. <laughs> yes. Hey, good evening, everyone. Uh, just a question to clarify. Uh, you would have noticed, you would have noted the start of the registration where you add and drop the classes, but the final day which you have to add and drop classes would be the 20th, I believe you had said? 20th of September, yes. Oh, yeah. 20th. Yeah? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. But in order to add drop, you need to have registered first. <laughs> right? So if you haven't registered, you can't go into the add drop zone because you would have nothing to add or drop. Yes, you register first, and then you have up until the 20th to make a change. Yeah. I, I think we need to check that. You can't add, really. You change. Right. Any others? OK, one other here. Hi. Hello. Oh. Hi, afternoon. Um, I saw the segment here, and you mentioned it in terms of the breakout sessions for the various faculties. Um, I didn't say anything mentioned, though, in terms of the faculty of um, culture and creative arts. Yes, got you covered. OK. Yes, not to worry. It's, a, it's, a, it's missing, but we've got you covered. Yes, Dean. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. OK, we have a very informed group of students here this evening. Thank you all who have informed us, enlightened us so quickly. I want to say thanks to everyone who came out this evening to share with us our principal, uh, Professor Clive Landis, our president of CHAPS, KFIL, Associate of Postgraduate Students, Mr. Emmanuel Alexander. The, the ones who gave testimonials as well. Dr. Sherma Roberts, our director, giving us our welcome remarks this afternoon. Mrs. Jordan, Carol Jordan from the graduate office, talk master's office. Thank you for your insightful explanation of the registration process and encouraging all our students to register on time, make the changes on time. Um, and all those who have come out this evening and helped us, uh, security of course, our caterers who are making sure we can spend the hour and a half as we've planned and we're making it through to the breakout sessions this afternoon. So again, thanks to all who've come and shared with us and we will now look at our breakout sessions the couple there's a, there's a leaf that in your brochure and the, the the two changes i've made faculty of culture or the two additions or clarifications faculty of culture you are in room l r2 so lt1 we are here so all of the social sciences management studies economic solicies you'll stay right here you're assigned a, uh, a space here. Tourism as well, you were assigned a space here. Um, so Faculty of Culture, you are in LR2, which is across the corridor. Someone out there will, will show you where LR2 is if you're not already familiar. Government and Sociology, I've assigned you to LR4. LR4, Government, Sociology, Politics, 
Social Work, LR4. Psychology, thank you. LR4 and all of the new Faculty of Social Sciences research students. So all new Faculty of Social Sciences research students. Your Deputy Dean, Dr. Prasad, sitting right here at the front corner, wants to meet with you in this space as well. So all Faculty of Social Sciences research students, very specific. All the other research students, you go with your other faculty, your faculty, but they want for social sciences, you meet with your deputy dean, Dr. Nadini Prasad, right here in this room, and she will, you want to stand so they can all see you if they're here? So they don't go looking around. This is Dr. Prasad, deputy dean for, for faculty of social sciences. So you will meet with her in this room. If there are any questions about your allocations, please let me know, um, someone will, direct you but at this point we will break and go into our breakout sessions where your coordinators will show you or walk you through the preliminaries of of your programs thank you so much for coming <laughs>